a lot of the things that I learned as a child, once I became um, an adult, didn't work anymore. And that is, you know, it's typical of all of us that, you know, the ways that we survived as children don't necessarily work as survival techniques as adults. So, um, yeah. So a lot of that. Yeah. And so that is really where the journey started, right? Is because I started saying, so this how, isn't working. So how old were you, would you say, I mean, I know you went to uh, Purdue and you majored in uh, English. Is that correct? Actually, or, it was just education. Yeah. It okay. was education. I knew it was an E word. Sorry about that. So you no, majored in education and you were uh, married and uh, maybe having children. And how old were you, Francie, when you started realizing uh, that things, that the way you grew up wasn't normal and that mm. there was this uh, need to take a, maybe a little bit deeper look? What specifically, if you could pinpoint maybe one event or how you were mm. feeling at your life in that point, mm -hmm. that made you kind of want to dive deeper into who Francie is? Yeah. Um, I, I think probably my relationship with my mother was probably the, the thing that the Lord used to really prompt me to start diving into my own personal journey. And, you know, I, I had some real desire to be, um, I had some real desire to be to have a good relationship with my mother, but I didn't. And so that desire helped prompt some of my own healing, where even though she wasn't able to do some of the things that maybe a normal mother, and we really have to put those in quotes, um, but she wasn't able to meet the needs that I had as a daughter. And because of that, um, I had to learn how to find those needs to be met in other places. And, you know, as you grow older, those places can be unhealthy mm -hmm. or they can be healthy. And so yeah. um, I think, I think <laughs> probably, um, you know, probably mid thirties, I started saying, wow, I need to, I need to find out more about who I am really for real, because I think I, what I did for years and years, probably up until that point was, you know, I really served others. I mean, in a, in an unhealthy way, like in a very codependent way, um, you know, it was all about everyone else and never about me. And I, I think that is where a lot of us probably find ourselves. And, you know, I just want to applaud you for <clears throat> taking that pivotal step at such an earlier age. I mean, I was, I think I was 50 when we met. And in fact, I know I was. And, um, um, but there is no right or wrong time. The important thing that we have to realize is that we make that step period. And um, I just wanted to interject for just a moment. The, when I first, when I met Francie the very first time, um, I had not been on a retreat in 20 years. I had isolated for 20 years. Francie probably doesn't know that about my story, but um, I hadn't heard about the uh, opportunity to attend retreat, and I, I didn't even think about it. I just packed my stuff, and God provided funds for it, and I jumped in my car in Franklin, Tennessee, and high sale at the Knoxville, <laughs> and walked in, and I saw Francie, and I was, I was the first one there, and I was like, I had no clue what to expect, but I was not disappointed at on any level. Um, uh, Francie is a fabulous facilitator and is does this oh so well. I'm getting a little ahead, but um, I'm just very thankful because had it not been for that particular retreat, I would not. Um, I don't think I'd be as far along as I am in my what I call it recovery emotional mm -hmm. sobriety and definitely was a pivotal point for my view of how to view my own story and embrace how much God really loved me because I had become pretty bitter towards God. But anyway, I'm getting ahead. But um so the you attended um 
the Seattle School of Theology and Psychology and mm -hmm. did a certification out there underneath Dr. Dan Allender. Can you share with us briefly about that? I know it was a long, sure. it was a year long uh, journey on that. <laughs> a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we spent a year um, learning and their premise is that you can't take anyone anywhere that you haven't been. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea was that we would learn, of course, how to do um, some story work and we'll and talk about that in a minute, but we could, we would learn story work, but in order to learn how to do story work with others, we had to engage in story work for our, uh, ourselves and our own stories. So um, yeah, it was um, fairly heart wrenching work um, for, um, for the whole group, for me and, but very insightful and the whole idea really you know i mean if we're not working I mean, if we're not willing and working on our own stuff you know we we really don't have the right to to work with others in their stuff yeah yeah you're exactly right i mean I, um you know um i think that and i'm glad you said that because that was part of uh, another pivotal point was that i came to I had to accept responsibility and I had to own my own crap <laughs> mm -hmm. stop because it, otherwise it lends us to the more victim mentality of it's always someone else's fault and blah, 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 blah. No, 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 y'all know that whole narrative and it doesn't serve anyone well at all. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and then the shame sometimes that is, uh, uh, associated with our own stories where the shame from, Decisions we've made, you know, um, addictions or struggles we've had, or or this general shame of you know, shame always um, is about making you feel bad as a person. You should have known better. You should have done this. You could have, would have, could have, should have, and it doesn't work. And yeah. so, um, Francie, if you would um, kind of venture into um, a look inside and mm -hmm. share with the women, what does a story retreat look like? Um, for those of us who are not familiar with what that might look like. Yeah, that's great. Um, I, I'll share a story in order to, um, to kind of dive into that actually. One of the very first stories that I explored um, as an adult, one of my childhood stories was a brownie bonfire story where I was a brownie and this is a real, you know, this is really, truly what happened. Um, so I was about four or five, um, probably five, and went to a bonfire. I don't remember knowing anyone, however, um, and my mom wasn't there. And it's this, it's really important to dive into detail when you do story work. And so some of the details are that I didn't know anyone. Um, my mom wasn't there. And um, I found myself trying to figure out how to roast a hot dog. And so the first time I actually told this story to my husband, we were on a hike and I said, um, I said, yeah, I was trying to roast this hot dog. It was hard and difficult and cumbersome. And, you know, I was putting this hot dog and then I put it in the fire and it fell off the stick. And then I was just, devastated and didn't know you know what to do and no one was there to help me and you know and then I paused and I said can you believe I didn't even know how to roast a hot dog and he go mm -hmm. and I mean this is why community this is why we do story work because literally I'm still as an adult beating myself up for not knowing how to roast that hot dog and he says this to me. He says, how old were you? And I said, I was five. And he goes, Francie, you've had five-year-olds. Do five-year-olds know how to roast a hot dog? And it was, it was so revelational for me hmm. in the moment of understanding like, wow, I am, this is my self-talk. This is my self-talk that's going over and over. You didn't even know how to roast a hot dog. 
And it goes on and on and on in my 30s. I'm, you know, I'm looking at my children saying, I didn't even know how to parent this, or I didn't even know I screwed this up or I screwed that up. And it's, it's that inner talk that's going on all the time. And I had not even noticed it until that moment. And so, um, so that's what story work really does is it reveals things that we can't see ourselves. And, um, so what we do in a retreat is we invite um, we invite people to come and join in small groups. These are very intimate small groups. We have about um, five people in a group and we facilitate story work where people share a story and then we speak truth. And, and was, yeah, go I ahead. Say we had six women there. And okay. like I said, I didn't know any of them. And um, I really didn't know what to expect. I was I was part of a story group back in Franklin, Tennessee, in a, a Christ community <clears throat> that was facilitated by a woman who had done the same thing, but on a smaller basis. Mm -hmm. But it was so life giving and life changing, and um, I, I I ended up sharing part of my story um, that I did not intend to share because of all the shame. And um, I have a daughter that I surrendered to adoption. And so I didn't want to tell that story. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> because there was so much shame and hurt there and God had a different plan that day. <laughs> and that's the beauty of it is that um, uh, he threw that and through these beautiful group of women at the retreat whom I'd never met, but there was such um connectedness with them because you get in there and you're like oh i'm not the only one oh my gosh and it's just such a beautiful thing and when they started speaking truth into my life and into my story mm -hmm. and i don't know if francie remembers this but um she looked at me and she said if because i had been so angry with god and blaming him for things that he had nothing to do with but Francie looked at me and she said, Martha, if you could see the physical difference in you right now, as that weight was coming off of me, it was literally making a huge difference. And I have not, thank God, I have not been the same since. <laughs> and so, um, anyway, but, uh, so y'all, you and your, um, husband rob y'all have formed a nonprofit called look inside is that correct mm -hmm. yep that's correct. and how long has it been up and running and what are y'all doing with that hmm. okay so the actual look inside um you know rob rob is the numbers person so just i'll say we have been a nonprofit, i believe for six years if i'm mm -hmm. i'm I hope that's right. And, but we've been doing this ministry um, retreats for over 10. So um, yeah, in the chats, 10 years, 150 retreats and, and um, 1500 alumni. So yeah, so I mean, it's, it's, it's a remarkable <clears throat> thing. And I just want to say to you, Martha, um, I think there were a few years in there that we didn't speak um, you know, you were doing your thing, you were moving from Franklin to, to Missouri and that kind of thing. Um, however, when we just spoke um, just recently, I don't know, a few months ago mm -hmm. and started yeah. talking again, I was like, Martha, you have grown so much. Like, it's amazing. And, and, and two, it's just so fun to see the people um, there are physical differences when, when some people come and leave, like you can physically see the change. Um, that's not true of everyone, but definitely true. I have, I mean, it's, it wasn't just you. There have been plenty of people that I look at and I go, wow, she looks different. Like, it's amazing. It so. is, and then the camaraderie, I've actually kept been able to stay in touch with a few of the women there, and there's just this camaraderie that um, I have not found very often in, in women uh, retreat 
And so when I was, um, uh, you know, I'm, uh, my last question for you before we go to open question and answer for the um, listeners would be, and I guess it's probably self-explanatory, but you know, why do a retreat based on story work versus another retreat just to study a book of the Bible or just to, you know, um, um, do a book review? So why why the important why do you think it's important for us to do the story work? You've already hit on this stuff. Um, so story work is so different. Okay, so two things I want to I want to say. You had said something about the women, and I will say that one of the things that I find that's so amazing. Not only does God bring the exact right people for the exact right retreat, the exact right, you know, situation. I, it's amazing. Um, but also there is, um, I've, I've learned that there is a way to bring people together in a safe place, um, in a way that is, um, that is good. Um, because I think a lot of, you know, a lot of us women come together and we don't have good boundaries. We don't have, you know, and then there, there's this whole thing of, um, we just don't do it well. But if, if we learn, we, we can learn how to do it well. And so that's part of the retreat is just coming in and learning some of those things of like, you know, how to be safe person, how to look for clarity, how to grow, how to, you know, those things um, where, you know, not to, not to steal time away from someone who's crying, like it's okay to cry. And we're, you know, as a society, we're really not okay with people who cry. I mean, really, we're not, um, because it's uncomfortable. And so, um, so that's that. Um, And I got off the subject a little bit because, (laughs) because I really wanted to get that in. Um, <clears throat> and you had asked, tell me, remind me of the question. Oh, I was just talking about my story. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Um, and You're right. fine. Yes. <laughs> it's all good. So the, the story thing, um, I find that if you've grown up in a Christian home, you know a lot about the Bible. You really know a lot of head knowledge. But what we're missing is the heart of God. Mm-hmm. And the heart of God um, wow, I'm going to get teary. The heart of God is um, one who sweeps in to comfort and to um, to meet us in those really tender places that we tend to cover up. And when we cover up those places and don't allow God to come in and comfort us, um, we're really missing out on so much of the gospel truth. Because the gospel truth is that we follow him in death. And when we don't follow him in death and try to skip over to resurrection, it doesn't work well. So um, the the reason we do story work is so that people can come and um, be part of a community who speaks truth and allows the comfort of God to come into those places of shame those places of, um, of just true grief. And he does, he shows up every time. Like he, he is so faithful. He's so faithful that that's what he loves to do. He loves to do that. He does. And you hit the nail on the head. I'm so glad you brought up the word comfort. Um, because, um, he does desire to meet us in our stories and not at this toe tapping, finger shaking, all the figure that we sometimes think of him as mm-hmm. but the welcoming shepherd that literally when I look back at the retreat he literally met me right where I was yeah. and 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 he did it in such a way that it was beautiful and mm-hmm. um France uh and the other thing that I remember oh so well was um <clears throat> the Naomi and Ruth time that we were required to have and um, I have a gift of gab. I'm, I'll talk to anybody. Just ask my daughter. If you're standing still, I'll talk to you. But um, um, Francie does a, uh, a, part, a part of that retreat was that 
we were paired with a, uh, it was an Naomi and a Ruth, and we had to sit, not had to, we had the privilege of sitting and listening to someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, remind me, is that for an hour or 30 minutes that we, and you don't ask any questions. No. <laughs> you sit there and listen. And I find that that is a much common factor with uh, people because we feel like we have not been heard, really heard. Mm -hmm. And that in itself, just knowing that I was able to sit and listen to uh, my, you know, the woman she paired me up with, that I still stay in touch with, um, listen to her story and hear all of it, and mm -hmm. vice versa. And it was so life giving. And uh, because that is not our society, it is not what culture teaches us to do. Yeah. And so it was done beautifully at that retreat. So um, I think Francie is going to, um, we're going to open the floor for a few question and answers. If anybody has any questions directly for Francie about who, uh, where she's, where she's at in life and what they're doing and the retreats. And uh, I know they're getting ready to start a uh, retreat um, uh, tour, as it were. And they, I know your husband is coming to the St. Louis area. And so that is exciting. That but um, is if you would, don't forget to share your link to your Facebook page. And um, um, so yeah. um, if anybody has a question, if you want to take your Self off mute and you can ask directly that would be wonderful and I'm thankful for having you here today Francie and being my first guest on uh, Healing Moment with Martha thank you so much you're amazing so, you're amazing so anybody have any questions for Francie and don't forget to post your um, web link up on the oh, yeah. chat area the website sure and you guys can go in and, and hear and get information on that and uh, <clears throat> so, um, um, I have a question. Great. Go ahead, Mary. Um, I'm in full-time ministry. And so I, you know, a lot of times you can sense folks have a lot of shame in their life when I'm coming alongside mm -hmm. them in a, you know, a caring role and, um, but they haven't been ready to like dive in mm -hmm. and kind of unpack all of that you know sadness and um so I don't know I was I didn't know if there was like ways to like love someone well or to show up in a you know where, where it's hard for them to even accept mm -hmm. care and um they don't even want to ask for help mm -hmm. um I don't know if you have any like words to the people in ministry who are in like or just any anybody who's in a caring role or yeah. constantly like push back you know to care yeah. but um i have found that it is harder to show someone genuine love i mean no that's not true it's harder for people to take in genuine love than it is for people to take in um you know, just kind of this, like if I were to just kind of be aloof or whatever, um, it's hard for us to take in genuine care from other people often if we've been hurt. So um, one of the things that I think I often find myself saying is um, it's an invitation. And, you know, it's an invitation to grow in this area if um, if you're ready and if you're not, it's okay. But it's always an there's always an invitation of the Lord there to, um, you know, I mean, all of our, all of our pain is really invitation. And that's a hard, that's hard, but it is an invitation. And so, you know, all the people, I mean, they're, gosh, I didn't want to do this work for probably, probably a full five years. I was pretty resistant just because I was afraid I was going to cry and I didn't want to cry. I thought I'm going to start crying and I will never stop crying. Like that was, I truly did think that because I had so much grief in my life and the things that I had walked through that I thought if I start crying, I will never stop. And, um, the crying does stop, but I had a lot of tears that I needed to shed and people are afraid of that. I mean, 
I understand that. And I think, I think that, you know, it sounds to me like you're a really caring person, Mary Bell. And, um, you know, people just have to be ready. And there's, you know, and we just have to pray them into that sometimes. Thanks. That's helpful. Well, Thanks, Mom. You're a joy and a treasure. Yes, she is. Well, thanks, Mary. And I just want to take a minute because I have three minutes left in our podcast time today. I want to thank all of you wonderful women. We have people from California and Tennessee and Missouri and, oh, I don't know where everybody else is from, but thank you so much for joining us today. It has been a joy and delight. And I w this is recorded and there will be a link. I'll be posting on my Facebook page and I'm sure Francis will be uh, sharing it on hers. Please feel free to share this podcast with other women or men. This is not limited to just men because we all have hurting hearts and hurting souls. But um, I wanted to take a minute to uh, um, thank Jeff Duke, who is one of my sponsors here. And uh, he's, uh, he's an attorney here in town in St. Louis. And so he was one of my first official sponsors. So I'm thankful for that. But I want to close with this um, as I felt led to do that earlier this morning. So very quickly out there, 61. <clears throat> and this is the reason for this whole thing. To bring good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to grant those who mourn in Zion to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, an oil of gladness instead of mourning and the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit. And I think that is largely what um, we are seeing happening with things like a look inside and story retreats. Thank you, ladies. You're all amazing. Thank you, Francie, again. I appreciate you, lady, more than you know. And um, thanks for listening with me this morning on Healing Moments with Martha. And like I said, it is recorded and there are a lot more to come. Thank you, ladies, and have a great day. Thank you, Martha. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, great. ladies. Really Thank enjoyed you. it. Thank you, Martha. You're welcome, Linda. Thank you. Love you. <laughs> Love you.